it's really inexpensive. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, techies, we have a little bit of a blind spot in how we talk about bargain phones, especially when we keep chatting about average consumers. I've spent some time with entry-level Motos, cool pads, Infinix, carrier branded phones, a number of devices floating between $100 and $150-ish. And often the phones you won't even spend $100 on, you might just get for free if you sign up for a new line. As a gadget enthusiast, this is really easy. These are not phones for me. They're probably not phones for you. My first experience with a new, the XX came out sometime last year, so this isn't new for new. I'm so proud of coming up with that terrible pun. But the company reached out and I was kind of curious. I keep saying I want to spend more time with, you know, sort of the entry level tier of devices. This phone retails for $130 on Amazon. So what's it like? It's pretty much fine. It's really not hard finding a slightly more expensive phone. That's a little nicer. It's kind of a no-brainer that this is not a powerhouse gadget, but it represents an entire market largely ignored in our tech conversations. Everybody. We all need some kind of smart computing device to participate in modern society. People on a budget, people with bad credit, people who just don't need anything more. The X6 Plus resembles all the things we'd look for in a daily driver phone. I'm kind of off my script here a little bit. I'm not doing my normal performance tier categorization, but there are a couple things I do like. The screen at this price is respectable for a 720p LCD. Sure, the asymmetrical bezels, they don't look amazing, but I kind of can't care at $130. The rear fingerprint sensor is always a welcome ergonomic addition for any phone. This is not the best fingerprint sensor I've ever used on a phone, but the placement is my favorite. We're definitely not talking audiophile grade, but the headphone jack is a feature we never should have given up on, especially on premium tier devices. So it's refreshing to still see it on budget devices. And the camera, the camera feels pretty old, but it is functional. And in decent light, you can still get some decent shots. And speaking of feeling kind of old, kind of old fashioned, but one that I genuinely do miss is having phones with removable backs. It's easier to repair, toolless access to SIM card and memory cards. Battery, it's right there. This is more practical. I gotta snap it all back together. You gotta get all those clicks. I need my clicks. Yeah, it's an LTE only device. The battery is reasonably good to get about a day's worth of use out of it, especially if your needs are more mainstream communicator, a little social media. It's, it's a daily driver phone, but at 130 bucks, I feel this is a different conversation. I wanna take you on a quick flashback. Years ago, about six, maybe seven years ago, a friend of mine was really trying to save some cash and got saddled with one of those really cheap LG phones. I mean, I think it cost around $200. I mean, if I'm trying to remember that correctly, and that phone was miserable. It was cheap and it was cheap. I mean, if you're complaining about lag or stutter on more expensive current devices, you've forgotten what lag really is. The cameras could not take photos, the screen was sub HD and gross, and the battery couldn't last a full day. I convinced him to return it, and I talked him into spending about $100 more and getting a Nexus. He was a lot happier. I mean, you're actually able to participate in modern society. I think we still have that idea of the entry level. And that's not what these phones represent anymore. My friend was trying to save some cash back in the day, but he had the means. He was able to bump his budget up another $100. Not everyone has that budget flexibility. Not everyone wants to shop a two to three year old premium phone on the used market. And those people still need phones. What this new reinforces, you know, how I felt after using all those other entry level phones. We no longer need to scare folks with that reaction. You know, you see the phone and you start like breathing through your teeth face. <sighs> These phones won't be as long lived. They won't be as feature rich. They won't be as fun, but they're not 
immediately e-waste out of the box. They're capable of getting the basics covered, interacting online, consuming some media, music, movies, maybe even playing a little solitaire. Modest performance at an appropriate price. And we thankfully don't need to worry as much when our friends or relatives leave a carrier store with the free phone after signing up on a new contract. When it comes to the new X6 Plus specifically, I think we need to be careful how or where we shop it. The model I was sent was locked to Verizon, so unsurprisingly, it only works on Verizon. If you're shopping it on Amazon, it's labeled unlocked, but it doesn't seem to really be unlocked, and there are numerous complaints about trying to use it on other MVNOs. This phone does not get the same kind of recommendation I might enthusiastically deliver for a nicer mid-ranger, at three to four times this price. But I'm not conflicted at all for that person who just needs to cover the basics or that person who's really trying to save some cash. There's something encouraging about this kind of tech trickling down to lower and lower prices. We need to have fair conversations about build quality, expected life cycle, software support, but the consumers who would have been the most vulnerable shopping at the entry level they've got better options than they used to have. I'll of course leave some links down below for more info on new phones where you can shop them online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, and supporting your favorite content creators. Never been more critical. I greatly appreciate those of you who are checking out the links down below. Maybe you're shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. Full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals in the world. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Not so much on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next review.